Hello, welcome to the Hollywood Times. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, this is Ethel Ann Bear at the Hollywood Times, and it's our pleasure today to welcome Nancy Allen. Now, you probably know Nancy Bess as an actress from her career making turn as the meanest mean girl in the horror classic Carrie to her award winning work as a futuristic police officer on Robocop. Every top director in town wants to work with Nancy Allen from Steven Soderbergh to Brian De Palma to Paul Verhoeven, Hal Ashby, Robert Zemeckis. They want to work with her because she makes them look good. But here in L.A., a lot of us know Nancy even more as an activist and a warrior. As executive director of WeSpark, Nancy's life's work now is providing free services to enhance the quality of life for cancer patients and survivors and their loved ones. And since WeSpark is throwing its big annual comedy fundraiser next week, I thought this would be a good time to check in with Nancy Allen. Welcome, Nancy, to The Hollywood Times. Oh, Ethley, thank you so much for having me and for that extraordinary introduction. I hope I can live up to everyone's expectations. I know, you think I'm, re, I'm, you think I'm a writer, right? <laughs> I know, exactly. Well, I'm going to take you everywhere with me to introduce me. <laughs> so tell me how, tell me the story of We Spark. Tell me if you're the executive director of films and she was a cancer patient and had two young children and uh, lived in the Valley and found there was really nowhere for her to go for support and there was nothing available for her children. Also found, not unlike any other cancer patient, that it affects your whole community, your parents, your siblings, people just don't know what to do. And um, so she uh, decided she wanted to open a support center and wanted to provide free services for everyone. She was told, no, this is not possible. You cannot do that. You can't, it's not sustainable. But she did not understand, no. And uh, I first got involved as a celebrity golfer uh, for the first fundraisers. She said, you golf? And I said, yeah, I golf a little bit. And that's that was my first uh, participation. And then when she called me and said, I found a place and I want your help. Uh, and, uh, I, I think you should be the creative program director because you're into all of that woo-woo stuff, which you know, was kind of a funny thing to hear from her, but it, you know, it, it was, I mean, I had explored a lot of, uh, modalities and uh, as you mentioned in the mission statement, uh, enhancing the quality of life by providing free services that provide emotional relief from the emotional and physical side effects of a cancer diagnosis because they're they're both present and they're present for uh generally always the cancer patient and for their loved ones so that's how I first got involved and I started I taught yoga I introduced meditation and I and and then um and this was 2001 mm -hmm. so we started doing things like energy work and um hypnotherapy and we were known in those days as oh they're the woo woo organization over there and through the years people found out that those modalities were actually extremely helpful in relieving stress and pain and sleep problems and all kinds of side effects and and so as the years went on we became the go to and people would ask me to send programs here there and around and when Wendy died um everyone thought the organization would just fold up and go away. And I thought, nope, not on, not on my watch. You know, there was my friend and it was her mission. And, and I'd lost my father to cancer. And like, like many people, all of us, we've had many friends and family members who have struggled with a cancer diagnosis. So, um, so it's been 22, 23 years for me. So People just assume I'm one of the founders, and in a way, in my heart, I feel like I am since uh, I worked side by side with her. Yeah, I always think of you that way. Now, how much has it grown? How small did it start, and how big has it gotten? Well, the first year, at the end of the first year, we were really proud that we had one program every day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember the calendar looking, oh my God, seven programs. But um, now we have at least 40 things, at least 40 programs a week. You know, we serve a tremendous number of people, men, women, uh, teens, young adults, 
and uh, have a variety of support groups, uh, uh, some cancer specific, some not, some stage specific. And a lot of, a lot, we, we actually have a lot of individual, we probably provide 20 to 30 individual uh, services per week, meaning hypnotherapy, uh, reflexology, which is really helpful in circulation and pain relief. And, and uh, we have a wonderful woman who does um, uh, uh, oncology massage. And um, I mean, it's just, it, it's just really exceptional. And then of course, informational and educational programs. So it's, uh, we're busy. It's changed because a lot of things now are virtual, which is sort of the good news in a way, because a lot of people who couldn't come for services before, now they can pop on their computer just like we are and receive support and information. And uh, some, are, some are virtual, some are hybrid, some are in-person. What are so, some things, what are, what are some sort of cancer treatments and relief that you can offer virtually? Because that sounds exciting. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, you can do hypnotherapy virtually, guided imagery, which is a lighter form of hypnosis that you could do at a group level, because mm -hmm. you don't want to do hypnotherapy for a group, but you do that. Certainly yoga, certainly, well, we don't, we do Tai Chi in person, but we offer a few yoga classes. Um, we have, what else do we do? Uh, I mean, I think those are, oh, drumming circles. We'll do that sometimes sound and sound therapy. There's a lot of things that um, can be very, very soothing uh, for oneself. And, and on occasion, we'll offer uh, acupressure. So you could have acupressure in person online and, the, and they can teach you uh, places that you can touch and press on yourself that can help relieve some anxiety, pain, or stress. You know, it's um, pretty remarkable what you can do. I like the connection of being in person, but, you know, it's uh, it's helpful for people who either don't have transportation or they just don't feel that well and they couldn't go to their group before. Now they can. So it's uh, uh, the pandemic has sort of helped us in a strange way. Now, your facility is located on Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks, correct? And how many people does it accommodate? Oh my God, we have 9,000 square feet. So we have room for lots and lots and lots of people. Uh, our large support group room can hold up to, I would say 18 people in a group. And then there are smaller groups, the yoga and movement room where we also do Tai Chi and, and presentations. I mean, it, it's it's huge. And we have a gorgeous uh, communal kitchen where we can join in and have um, wellness days and have uh, potlucks and demonstrations of nutritional uh with from nutritional therapists so it's uh it's really quite large and all of this this is all free i mean what's amazing is that you're not inundated with people from everywhere to get these free services everything is free and uh that was the fun that was my joke it's in the early days it's really hard to give away free <laughs> services people think there's some kind of a catch but no, there's no catch. And, and it's interesting to, uh, and I, this is certainly something I can relate to. Um, whenever someone is new and you tell them what we can offer them and what they can have for free, they immediately want to give back and say, oh, well, I want to volunteer. How can I help? And, you know, we always tell them, you know what? You receive this. There'll be time later if you want to volunteer. Let us take care of you now. And uh, the caregivers are the really tough ones because they're there wanting to make sure that their cancer patient is taken care of. And I like to say to them, let us take care of you while you take care of them. It's very important, very important for caregivers because I tell you, I have never seen a couple come in, whatever form that couple is, mother, daughter, father, son, married couples. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Whoever looks worse is the caregiver. <laughs> the girls are busy taking care of their cancer patient. So um, we're always trying to get them in for more services. And now how do you find the different practitioners that you're going to deal with? And I should I should explain that these are not doctors. You're not doing cancer treatment like it meant. You're not a medical facility. You are a support facility. We are. And all of these services are not covered 
by insurance. So we're sort of filling that gap uh -huh. of services that are very helpful and um, that provide a lot of relief from the medical treatments, quite honestly, you know, the side effects from those medical treatments uh, and the emotional side effects. So, uh, you know, when we started, um, I was the yoga teacher. I mean, that's what we, where we began. And through the years, people have heard about us and found us and contacted us and um, expressed an interest in, you know, bringing their modality. Uh, I had never heard of Qigong and someone mentioned it to me in the early years. And I made some phone calls and found someone who was really amazing at that a particular, they, they like to refer to it as the grandfather of Tai Chi. And so that, that same person all these years later is doing what's considered, I'll call it for lack of a better word, medical Qigong, which is an energy work. Okay. So it's getting that energy flowing and giving some relief through that. So, um, I, I, all I can tell you is somehow a lot of them found me and there was someone who did uh, a, an energy practice very similar to Reiki. And I remember her standing in the doorway and introducing herself to me and speaking to me. And I could feel my, I could just feel myself being soothed and <laughs> relaxed. And I remember saying to her, I don't know what you do, but I think we need you here. And, you know, through the years, uh, I, I try to, you know, through introductions and through studying different modalities that are out there, meet someone because it's a very specific and a very vulnerable population. So you want to make sure that people are have a certain kind of soothing energy about them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've uh, yeah, so we've chosen people very carefully. Ha really hard to find nutritionists who are available. Really hard to find. We have a nurse navigator who helps people figure out like if they don't understand what's going on with their diagnosis or they're having trouble they're in, with their insurance issues they try to walk them through that so uh, a lot of these those kind of things are really hard to find because most of them have full-time physicians but uh, we have a great team of therapists who run ther therapists and social workers who run the support groups high high level of expertise in what they do and um, I would say that's that's the key. People have to be better than better than the best. They also have to have a heart and kindness about them so that people who are so vulnerable feel safe. So and uh, presumably some of them are well paid are paid by your fundraising efforts and some of them are volunteers. We've had a few volunteers actually who are still volunteering since year one. Uh, but some of the people that we have who are at the top of their field uh, are paid, but at a minimal amount so that we can afford to offer it free. I mean, some of them make, you know, three times, four times what we pay them. But yeah, we pay most of the people who come. So there is a cost to us, but there is no cost to anyone else. So we do all kinds of, I think, really great fundraisers, which I like to think of also as friend raisers, people who are, become friends of the organization and and come and, you know, um, help us raise the the money that we need to continue to provide the services. Which, which brings us to next week's big fundraiser. Now, you have a few different big fundraisers each year. Tell us about them. Do, name drop a little bit, because I know you're, <laughs> you're an L.A. group, so a lot of your supporters are probably very oh. prominent people. So tell, tell me a bit about how you keep We Spark uh, up and running. Well, since both Wendy and myself had roots in the entertainment industry, we call on a lot of people and they show up. So we do have Jason Alexander poker tournament every year. So Jason has come. I mean, this is like the 23rd or I think it's probably the 22nd year, I think, that we've done that. And that's a blast. That's a lot of fun. And that's usually in March. Uh, we have a, a, a run walk, which is in January, end of January. That's a lot of fun. And um, what else do we do? Oh, well, we do drag queen bingo. That's really silly and crazy and fun. But then we have our annual, what we call our gala, um, not a black tie or anything, but it's kind of fun and we get dressed up and it's a, it's called May Contain Nuts and it's our comedy show. Cause I think, I really believe people need to laugh. You know, we all need to laugh no matter what's going on if we can find the humor or some humor in it or anything that just relieves that tension of just getting through it all. So that's our big one. And that's coming up. 
a week from tomorrow, which I can't believe. Um, very exciting. We, uh, Alonzo Bowden has been our master ceremonies for years. Um, Paul Reiser is going to drop by and do some great comedy for us. Uh, Caroline Rea is going to be there. David Lynch. Uh, David Lynch? No. Is that right? Did I get that right? <laughs> I don't know. It's awful. I know, oh I, my god! I don't think it's going to be the director because he's definitely. It's not, not him. Really he's funny not guy. funny. <laughs> he is so Drew Lynch. That's who it is. Drew Lynch. But you know, you never know. David Lynch might just drop in if he hears about it. And, and you know, I can see you with it. I can see you in a David Lynch movie. I think the sensibility yeah, would, would segue. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we do. We have a lot of big supporters. Uh, some of our original supporters were people that Wendy and I had worked with, like, here's my little name dropping, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, Robert Zemeckis. Um, I don't know. I can't think right now. But if you look at our original founders and donors, you can see. And, and everybody has been tremendously supportive in the community because who has not been through this disease or knowing someone with this disease. And uh, it's a great cause. And, you know, um, you know, people need support. We really do. It's like, and there's no reason to go through any of this alone. So um, yeah, I'm really proud to be part of the organization. Now there's a website that people can contact both, both if they want to support and also if they need the support. Absolutely. It's wespark.org and um, visit us there. It's a beautiful website. You can read and find out more about the services. If you need them, just send us an email and we'll send you back the forms and get you uh, set up with programs. And if you can look at our events and fundraisers, which are really fun. I mean, they're really, really fun. Uh, we have, we believe in having fun and and there's volunteer opportunities, or you can just come in and join in the uh, celebration. Now, how did you come to be called We Spark? What did it sounds almost like a dating service? <laughs> well, I know it's kind of crazy. You know, Wendy with her acronyms, she was, I mean, it was really all on the cuff. So, you know, we, the original um, logo was like people circling around with arms around another. And so the SPARK stands for support, prevention, acceptance, recovery, and knowledge. Oh, and wow. so that is WeSpark. And the crazy thing about WeSpark, it sounds good now because people know who we are, but I have to tell you in the early days when I was making phone calls to, to introduce us to people and say, hi, you know, I'm calling from WeSpark. I was like, we what, we who, you know, what do you do over there? You know, so it was a challenge in the, in the early days, but uh, not so much anymore. You know, it def definitely you could use that name for a, oh, it's just coffee dating service. Like, do we spark or do we not? Spark? <laughs> <laughs> we definitely spark, spark over there. We got a um, lot of sparkle going on in the office. <laughs> now, I, I can see how your ability as an actress, your public presentation, your ability to get along with people, to listen to people, to understand people is very helpful skill set for you bringing to this world. But what are the satisfactions you get out of this that are similar to or different from the satisfaction you got out of a very successful career as an actress for many decades? You know, um, when I first started doing this, such a great question. When I first started working with Wendy, my friends were just so perplexed and they said, don't you miss being creative? And I said, no, no, this is really creative in a different way. Because in the beginning, I was creating the whole program map. Like, what are we going to be? What are we going to look like? And that was really exciting, actually, to, to do. Um, the I will say there's, um, you know, there's always a great feeling of fulfillment, you know, to go in and work and collaborate on a film and go home and be exhausted and feel. But, but I, I always... I love collaboration. That's for me is the real juice in life. And that's what this is because whether we collaborate, it's the staff, the creative staff that comes in, the, the, the facilitators, but the um, on a human level, when you see someone come in, because I've been there, I was there with my father, you know, I know what we were going through. And you see someone come in or call and they're just it, it literally in shock. And you can sit there and just, people just 
need to be heard, need to download their feelings and to be able to, as you learn in acting, listening, listening is the key to listen and hold space for someone. And you don't really have to do anything. There's nothing you can do. You can't fix it, but you can be there for them and to have someone hug you and say, thank you. You helped me so much. And at first I think I didn't do anything. And, but it is, it's, it's a great offering to uh, hold that space for someone. And uh, I, um, I, and I love, I love seeing people come in and they're in that state. And then you see them two weeks later, they're connected, they have their group. So you feel like you're part of that piece that helps them connect to recovering from a, a place where they feel pretty hopeless and terrified. And now they're not so terrified and they're not alone. Uh, and I think we all just, it's a, it's a great thing in life. It, we don't really have to go through anything alone. And um so I, um, I, I feel greedy for that feeling too. It's like, I love seeing someone new and being able to just hold them. And I can't say, oh, you'll be fine. And it'll be all right. Because that's, I, I, I mean, I can't say that. What I can say is we're here for you. Anything you need, we're here for you. And that is um, very meaningful. I wish that we'd had something like that when my father was sick. Uh, I went through cancer. I call it my cancer escapade in uh, during the pandemic uh, because it was very, it was early stage breast cancer, a lumpectomy and all of that. But I have to tell you, after all the years working in this field, I was just stunned that it's like, wait a minute, I have cancer? How is this possible? And, um, you know, but after I really got over the shock, I realized that I had resources available to me, which I used hypnotherapy immediately because everyone kept saying to me, stay positive. For whatever reason, I couldn't. All I could do is I was projecting future cadet. Oh, it's not, you know, no matter what anyone said, this head would not stop. So I used this the resource of hypnotherapy. I talked to one of the therapists who was really helpful. And, um, it made a big difference. It made a big, big difference for me. And so, um, so, so glad that you're okay. You're, you're full, you're in full remission. I take it. Yeah. Yeah. And I take a pill. I'm still on a medication for another year and change. And, uh, uh, but it's, uh, I, I, it's so funny because I, you know, having that tool of hypnotherapy and she gave me the suggestion of positivity on the day of my surgery, I showed up for surgery with, uh, well, I got up and my partner said, I said, well, are you ready? And I was like, oh, he said, you're all excited to go to the hospital. And we got there and everyone looked at me so gently and said, are you okay? And I said, oh, I feel great. I'm really positive. I mean, I don't know how it works, but I'm glad it worked because I went in there with no fear. And, uh, and it was the same with the medication. I had a lot of fear of taking the medication, but you know, I, the mantra was the medication is doing its good work and nothing else and not to worry about what could happen or what might happen. So I'm a big believer in the services. I feel like I tried ever, almost everything that we do on myself first. I, you know, I, was, I was gonna say, did it make any changes in, in what you emphasized or what you wanted to offer or what you felt wasn't needed? Did we spark change when you became a patient and not just a, you know executive director? Well, not really. I knew that what we had worked by then. Through the years, I will tell you, because when people, like you said, how did we meet people? When they come in and they say, oh, I do, you know, whatever I do, I do um, sound or whatever it is. And they would try it on me and I would see how I I would felt because I, uh, how I, how it would make me feel. I did find that there were people who would come in with, they had the cure, you know, they were, uh, and nothing against life coaches, but in this arena, it really wasn't the thing with some of the people that I met, just letting them know that they could make up their mind and they don't have cancer. It's like, no, it's actually a medical yeah, issue. It's right. not a mental issue, yeah. you know? So I don't think you're right for us, but I'm sure you're right for somebody out there. So um, it just, what it did is I understood everything that every person shared with me through the years that they thought, that they felt. It was like, oh, now I really get it. Mm -hmm. All the information about, oh, I have to get the pathology of the tumor and say this and this and this. And I thought, I didn't know what they were talking about. Now 
I really understand. And of course, the thing that's so great is that I've seen through the years is the, is the advances in the treatment. That's what I was just thinking of. The recovery rate amongst your uh, clients um, must be much greater now than it was 22 years ago. It is. And the diagnosis, some of them are much earlier and the treatments are less harsh. I mean, they're tough. Some of them are really tough, but there are other ones like there's some immunotherapy that's available for people and uh, diagnosing breast cancer really early, why it's really important to get your mammograms, really important for men, prostate cancer. So, so those, you know, colon cancer, all of those things can be diagnosed early and save, not only save lives, but save you from really going through really tough times. So please, 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 anything that you can screen early people, please do it. It's really worth it. And uh, yeah, the technology is great now. And the treatments are much more targeted. So in other words, if people are going through radiation and not just blasting you, they're really targeted. So, you know, progress is made, not enough, but, you know, a lot of progress is there. What's the newest, most cutting edge thing that you, as pretty much an expert in the field now, are aware of that some of us may not be aware of? What should we, we be very excited to look forward to in new uh, treatment advances? Question. I mean, I am not that medically uh, astute, but I do know that specifically now there's a treatment that's available, not to everybody with certain with a certain diagnosis uh, with prostate cancer. It's a very, because it used to be they've either removed the prostate or just radiate the whole area. And now it's a very, I think it's something called focal, if I'm not mistaken, that can target and just destroy just those cells. I don't totally understand it, but it is highly advanced and it's very cutting it cutting edge. Um, I know that all the blood cancers, there's a lot of advances there. People used to die. My father died from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and they're highly treatable and manageable now. Breast cancer is diagnosed because they have digital mammograms. You know, that's, that's, that's there. And, um, but other than the treatments, I don't really know anything more than that. Because again, That's we're not a medical exciting. facility. Yeah, but that oh. is, that oh, is enormously exciting. Um, so okay, so they're gonna they're gonna close us down on our Zoom any moment now. So I have to I have to ask you something about acting. So let's see. Let's go back. You you have had you know a terrific career with some of the most amazing directors and some of the best known movies. So think about like. Um, the the most favorite role or the most ridiculous anecdote or what when you when, when somebody says quick tell us the best thing that happened to you as an actress what would you come up what would you come up with oh my god well I know, just so, a very general question okay okay so you know I love all my roles uh in the films that people love I have a special place in my heart for for really for all of them but um I will tell you, I love doing RoboCop, but John Travolta, I did two movies with John Travolta. We did Carrie, which is where we met, and then we did uh, Blowout together. And we had a great time on that film. It's a silly anecdote, never told this to anyone before. So John was always, he says, oh, I don't know, I had this silly nose, it looks like a potato, and I don't know. And anyhow, so one day on the set, somebody, actually it was a second, second camera assistant carved out potato skins and I have a picture somewhere and we called John down to the set when we turned around everybody had a, had a potato nose on it was just a silly you know sometimes you need those silly moments you just do because long days hard days we were there in freezing cold Philadelphia in the dead of winter. And, uh, you know, he's such a, he has such a great sense of humor. And we just, you know, I don't know. I love my, I had great co-stars and uh, he's just one of my favorites because he's such a kind uh, and great collaborator, great actor. You never know what he's going to do, which I love about him. And if someone were to invite you back, I mean, this has actually been, as we noticed in the Emmys the other night, this has been a terrific season for mature women having meaty roles. So if somebody were to lure you back, could they? And what sort of lure would it have to be? You know, um, I never say never again. And the thing that always attracts me is first the script. It's got to be a good script. And um, 
I do like those bad girls, you know, I really do. <laughs> They're so much more fun. So, you know, when I think about, um, oh, what's his name that does all of those? Ryan, uh, you know, I'm talking about it. Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy. The, the swans. I'm, yes. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to call. I'm ready to go and be someone evil, at least partially evil. <laughs> Well, I think we know you're a little nice, but you are also a good actor, so you could probably. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> what, what am I forgetting to ask you that, that while we have you here, you, that you would like everybody to know before I let you go? Oh, you're not forget. You have this has been really great. I just want to say, please, if you need support, please call us. We're there for you. And um, and if you don't need our support, support us because. What we do is really of that great value to so many people in our community. It's right here in our community, you know, so um, and that's really it. And thank you to you for Absolutely. having me on here. And there are some tickets still available for the May Contain Nuts Banquet fundraiser next week. It's going to be at the Skirball Center in Los Angeles um, on the 25th, is it? Correct. 25th. Um, and um, I'm going, you're going. Um, yes. And it's going to be a great lineup. So we spark.org if you want to go and get yourself some tickets. Yes. And there'll be those cool silent auctions and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, it's actually a great silent auction this year. Really, really great. And we're honoring Jean Trebek, Alex Trebek's widow. And she is, you know, the unsung hero, you know, the caregiver. So it was the first time we're honoring a uh, a caregiver and she's just a very special and lovely human being so um and come laugh with us it's going to be fun well i'll be there and Good. i'll see you there thank you nancy allen thank you so much for your time it's been an absolute delight talking to you and i'm just so proud of you for all your work thank you athlete pleasure being here with you bye everybody